supposed is facing impending disaster, having to fire countless employees in recent months with a plummeting stock price, the key founders behind the company jumping ship, and Blizzard being listed as one of the most hated gaming companies of all time? This begs the question, what went so wrong for Blizzard? Blizzard was adored and loved by its fans. Its origin stories were organic, with each of the founders contributing $10,000 to get the ball rolling from grandma's money. It then rocketed to fame and became a highly successful, normal gaming company. With a loyal fan base, record sales, and rocketing innovation, Blizzard was adored by millions around the world. But in the last year or so, Blizzard has now become one of the most despised gaming companies in history. Originally called Silicon Synapse, Blizzard originally focused on porting other studios' games to different platforms. However, they would soon make a few of their own, releasing games like Rock and Roll Racing and Blackthorn. And by 1994, Blizzard was quickly growing and was acquired by Davidson and Associates for a little under $7 million. This was the first parent company to purchase Blizzard, kicking off an acquisition cycle that's still ongoing today. Blizzard's subsequent releases weren't smash hits by any means, but they kept the company afloat for the next three years. However, this would all soon change once Blizzard released their first hit, Warcraft Orcs and Humans. That game is sick, the game then managed to sell around 300,000 copies before reaching the end of its lifespan. Yet these were rookie numbers for what was coming. However, before releasing the games we know them for today, Blizzard was still getting pushed around by various publishers around this time. Eventually, the company ended up being a subsidiary of Vivendi, but they would go on to release Diablo in 1997. While initially only hitting modest sales numbers, the glowing reviews of the game eventually led to over 500,000 copies of Diablo being sold, five times what Blizzard expected. And this marked the start of Blizzard's golden years. First came Warcraft 2, a great sequel to their first game, then came hits like Starcraft, Diablo 2, and later Warcraft 3, a release Damn. that would forever change the gaming industry, Much giving love, rise Mr. to the Cal mobile XQC genre and catalyzing the growth of new games like Dota and League of Legends. Thank you. Around this time, Blizzard was a godsend for gamers around the world. I severely underestimated just how good a time it was. I had so much fun going back to this title. So then, how could it all go so wrong for Blizzard? What caused- yeah, Warcraft 3 helped gaming as a whole, like, to an, an incredible amount. Because of how customizable the game was, and the game mode that people created, some of these games are still living through other games right now that you don't even know about. A lot of the game modes created game modes uh, that, and a lot of things in gaming culture is from Warcraft 3. I'm not kidding, it's crazy. TD, TD, Blooms, Blooms, Dota, League, how could it all go so wrong for Blizzard? What caused Blizzard to collapse so dramatically? Well, there's many reasons for it. The first of these was Blizzard's growing apathy towards their fan base. The signs were slow at first, legal challenges over fan-made projects and a general sense by customers that they just weren't listening. However, at the time, all their new games outshined all the controversy. Instead, this was a problem that would come back to bite Blizzard. But for now, Blizzard didn't need to care about this, as they were preparing to release their new game, World of Warcraft. When World of Warcraft finally released in 2004, it blew everyone Everyone's expectations out of the water. Both critics and fans loved the gameplay loop, atmosphere, and sheer scale of exploration that was available. It's taken this long for the genre's breakthrough hit to finally emerge, but World of Warcraft is indeed that game. This is uh, just an incredible accomplishment and an incredibly fun game above all else. World of War would gain over 12 million subscribers at its peak and became the most played PC game for two years running. And so unsurprisingly, World of Warcraft would end up making Blizzard billions. The game was such a massive phenomena that it allowed the company to spawn their own convention, BlizzCon. And while on the surface BlizzCon seemed to be a great advertising event for their products, BlizzCon was also where they would later broadcast some of their biggest blunders. Behind the scenes of all of this, Blizzard was making some worrying moves in China. Back then, no one in the public really cared about China. And so because of China's huge market, Blizzard secured a deal with the CCP to release World of War. The condition being that it had to be published by a Chinese studio. And as they gained more and more fans in China, they had more and more incentive to keep the Chinese government happy. Through these actions, this would spell disaster for the company in the future, and would become yet another reason for Blizzard's decline. But China wasn't Blizzard's only partner. Blizzard would also merge with Activision in 2008. And while Blizzard did remain mostly independent, the influence of Activision He's on the of Blizzard was noticeable. Lots of people blame this for the greedy corporate decisions that Blizzard would later be known for. But for now, Blizzard would build on their previous successes, releasing sequels and expansions for their popular StarCraft and WarCraft franchises. These were met with great praise, and it seemed like the sun would never set for Blizzard, until it did. Come 2012, and Blizzard would make the first blunder. The last uh -oh. Diablo game had been released way back in 2000, which meant that fans of the series had waited 12 years for the new installment in the franchise. But when Diablo 3 was finally launched, Blizzard had failed to allocate enough resources to their servers. 
This wouldn't have been a problem if it only affected multiplayer, but Blizzard required the game to have an active internet connection in order to function. This caused a massive outrage for Blizzard fans, leading to countless posts and videos being posted about the infamous Error 37. Down, the servers are down, and every time I try to log in, all I get Error 37! Error 37! I keep trying to log in, and I get Error 37! Nonetheless, this single rain cloud on the horizon wasn't enough to phase Blizzard. It would take a lot more than a botch release to bring the giant down. After a set of successful expansions for World of Warcraft, the game was at its peak. But when their fourth expansion released, the player base actually began to drop. A trend that will continue throughout World of War's lifespan. The On fucking pandas, dude. were positive with a score of 82 out of 100. The fucking Although pandas. The fans were underwhelmed, feeling that the magic of World of War was starting to fade away. This was the first sign that bad things were coming for the Blizzard company. Cataclysm was fine. Cataclysm was fine, but Cataclysm was the beginning of the end, I think. Cataclysm showed that there was a couple things in the game that were like, uh, wait, where is, this, where is this going? Right? And then Panda really fucking really made it GG's. This decline would become most apparent around Most good, it was good, but there were some things about it that were kind of weird. Of becoming the company we knew today. Blizzard would go on to lose a ton of their fan base after shutting down Nostorius, a community server that ran an old Love version of World shit. of Warcraft. Many players were dissatisfied with the current trajectory of the game, so a group decided to start hosting servers for vanilla and previous World of Warcraft expansions. And Blizzard really wasn't happy about this. They weren't happy that around 800,000 people were playing World of Warcraft on a service that they didn't operate. So the company the company ended up filing a cease and desist notice to the Nostorius dev team, leading to their service being permanently shut down on April 10th. By doing this, this caused massive outrage in their community, and unsurprisingly failed to increase any of World of Warcraft subscriptions. Starting around 2016, a pattern of bad decisions would emerge in Blizzard. Sometimes they were greedy, and occasionally they seemed almost oblivious. Initially being a slow process, the company would start putting much more emphasis on making money over listening to their fans. Although there were still some good intentions at the company, the change was definitely noticeable. Blizzard shutting down Nostorius would be a relatively small controversy compared to what was coming next. With the world of Warcraft cash cow drying up, Blizzard decided to take a risk and branch out by developing a new IP. This would be done by taking creative liberty from popular hero shooters such as Team Fortress 2, and then combining this with RTS elements that the company was already familiar with. At the time, this was an innovative idea, and Blizzard's concept would eventually become known as Overwatch. Announced in late 2014. Wait, RTS? I'm RTS? And then combining this with RTS elements that the company was already familiar with. At the time, this was an innovative idea, and Blizzard's concept would eventually become known as Overwatch. Is there any RTS elements in that game? Announced in late 2014, the game's cinematic trailer quickly exploded online and got nearly everyone excited for what Blizzard had in Not store. Really? But it would be another year and a half until Overwatch finally released on May 3rd, 2016. Once released, the game skyrocketed in financial sales and would quickly begin dominating the cultural sector. On Twitch, Overwatch was a platform where many big streamers began to launch their career, with names like XQC gaining a massive following through playing the game. Overwatch's popularity led the game to easily coast for the first oh, couple of years of its lifespan. But cracks were starting to reveal themselves. Blizzard began rehashing their old holiday events instead of creating new ones like they used to. Controversial features like roll queue were also being added, which limited what hero players could use while further increasing matchmaking times. Additionally, Blizzard was diverting many of the resources towards Overwatch's floundering pro scene instead of their core game. All these actions continuously caused strife in the game's community until reaching ahead in spring of 2018. Chat. But before yeah, yeah, yes. I'm a new character that everybody's gonna hate me for, okay? This is a, this is a molten take that's gonna make you rage, okay? I think all the hype and mildness and whatever around a classic, a classic WoW, has been blown out of proportion. The importance of the people behind it and the size of it and the amount of players is completely overrated and overrepresented, okay? And it was never that big of a deal. It just wasn't. Okay, and it's a very small portion of the player base that nobody gives a fuck about. I don't know why people have got so mad about it. Skills, skill shit, and After Effects courses. And what I love, so much for free life. So many clubs didn't develop. There's just too much there. And which many players yes, just so found intolerable. Too overtuned. Sign up to Skillshare today.
Blizzard's introduction of Bridget is what many consider to be when Overwatch died. The character was just too overtuned, and her addition created a stale meta for months on end, which many players just found intolerable, causing a lot of them to quit the game for good. There's just too much there. AoE healing, armor, the armor buff, reducing damage, stun, uh, you get your own barrier as well, I mean... And later that year, things wouldn't get much better for Blizzard in terms of their other games either. During BlizzCon 2018, the company revealed what they thought would be a slam dunk, Diablo Immortal, and they couldn't have been any more wrong. After waiting over half a decade expecting Diablo 4, fans of the franchise were instead hit with the announcement of a Diablo mobile game. The game's presentation was just an absolute train wreck, being booed numerous times throughout. Is there any plans to make this playable on PC, or is this strictly mobile forever? Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do a uh, PC. Getting that kind of reception at your own convention really says something. One dissatisfied crowd member even managed to access the discussion panel and question the legitimacy of the game. Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? <laughs> Jeez, now it's fairly obvious why Blizzard decided to make the next Diablo a mobile game. One, the ease of monetization, and two, the potential for a much bigger audience. Compared to the industry standard of PC and consoles, developing for Love mobile gives publishers much more profits. Just look at people complained, and then you know what they did? They bought the game, they played the game, and they bought money into the game, they put money into the game. Clash of Clans, Pokemon Go, Candy Crush, and any of the other dozens of mobile games raking in billions through microtransactions. But Blizzard attempted to cash in on this market, and it's not really that surprising either, as mobile gaming is the most lucrative out of the platforms. I mean, almost half of all video game revenue comes from the mobile sector, and that's partly due to the sheer number of people who use their phone to play games. Yep. Keep in mind that until this point, Diablo had been exclusively sold on PC and console, so Blizzard was essentially blindsiding their consumers with the sudden platform this switch, is and by developing the game for mobile instead of the relatively smaller established audience, the core Diablo fanbase was left out to sure, dry, man. and Blizzard further demonstrated their bottom line is money over customer satisfaction, one of the biggest sins any big business can do. Later next if you're if you're wearing fucking thumb socks, you need to close the fucking thing and go outside and touch some grass and get some fucking maidens year in 2019, and Blizzard would go on to tarnish their reputation again. This would happen when they hosted a Hearthstone tournament. During an event interview, one of the pro players named Blitzchung made political statements in support of the ongoing Hong Kong protests. Now, obviously, China wasn't exactly happy about the stunt, and because of Blizzard's tie to the CCP and their dependence on the massive Chinese market, it wouldn't be long before they got their reprisal, as Blizzard has no problem being subservient to the interests of the Chinese government if it gives them more profits. And so after Blitzchung made the statement, he was immediately banned from all Blizzard related events and was forced to forfeit all the prize money he earned. The casters that were interviewing Blitzchung also got terminated just for being associated with him. Blizzard's CEO would then go on to justify these actions by stating their platform was quote, not for political views. But as you would probably expect, Blizzard has no problem. I mean, that's kind of basic though. Uh, I don't know. Stating their platform was quote, not for political views. But as you would probably expect, Blizzard has no problem ground sounding over socially accepted Western political narratives. These seemingly endless controversies were likely part of the reason that Blizzard decided to lay off around 8% of their workforce. Nah, people don't get it. People don't get it because they're, they're being naive. They don't know how the world is run. It's a simple concept. Um, I think it's overall about, about political sentence. Okay, it's just... Overall, a tournament about the game, they're playing the video game, it's about the tournament and the players in it. Uh, making, making a statement, okay? They, it says it in, in, in their terms of service. So you send a contract that says, don't do that. And people know not to do that. And they do that. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. Just because you think it's right, and I think it's right, doesn't mean that you have to do it, or you can do it. What, what, what if somebody uh, goes on a main broadcast and says, vote for Donald Trump, vote for Donald Trump, vote for my boy Donald Trump, MAG 2024, Pac-Man? What, what if somebody says that? Then you have to let it go through then, right? Because according to you, you can go on a main broadcast of a game, of a tournament broadcast that's about a game, and make widespread political statements and hide at the broadcast. So you can do that then. Right? So according to you guys, what you can do is that you, you, you can hijack, hijack the content. 
which I think is not something that people should do, but you'd be doing it. It's just, it's not. In early 2019, amounting to around 800 people losing their jobs. Then in See, there again, your medium is whether you, you are inc inclined with the argument or the statement being, being made. So if you agree with it, it's okay. And if you don't, it's not okay. You guys are being hypocrites. You shouldn't, you should, I, I just feel like overall, you shouldn't think this way. You're being a hypocrite. Because if you agree with, with the validity of the statement, you agree, oh, it's okay. But if you don't agree, no, 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 you can't do that then. That's lame. Don't, don't flex the rules whether if you agree or not. That's just lame as fuck. You're being hypocritical. You're hypocritical. Alive that year, one of the founders who worked at Blizzard for nearly 30 years stepped down. But there was one ray of hope left for Blizzard. With the Blizzard company collapsing in on itself, there was only one chance left for redemption. In 2020, the company announced that they would be remaking one of their most influential games of all time, Warcraft 3. This was Blizzard's chance to turn everything around. If they nailed a competent Warcraft 3 remake, their past transgressions would have been pardoned by most. However, this wasn't the case. Once Warcraft 3 was released, it was again a disappointing mess that detracted from the original version just by existing. Several of the game's promised features ended up being cut, like a campaign overhaul and new cutscenes. A lot of the mechanics from the 2002 version were also removed, such as the player ranking system, tournament mode, and match draw prevention. In fact, Blizzard's Warcraft 3 Remake received so much widespread denouncement from fans that it became rated as one of the lowest user-reviewed games on Metacritic. This f***ing thing comes out and none of that is in the game! They actually showed enhanced cutscenes, and the cutscenes are literally garbage. Fans didn't just hate the game; they felt lied to. I mean, the game was also it was also buggy. It didn't, it didn't. Guys, why is it being politics, Andy? I I hate this shit, man. People need to get a get a fucking grip, man. Dude, dude, things are political. It's political. But dude, is human rights political? Dude, I agree with you. All this all this Hong Kong stuff, I agree with you. I'm on your side. I'm on your side, man. Okay? Is it some, sometimes it's just not in the the place to do with it, man. I get it, man. Critics pan the release as yet just another greedy move from a company trying to squeeze as much cash as possible. And things would only continue to get worse for Blizzard. In July of 2021, it was revealed that the company had been under investigation for systemic sexual harassment, bullying, and unequal pay. For two years, the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing had been interviewing well, employees chance. and building a case against Blizzard. As you would probably expect, this caused a lot of people to stop grabbing their pitchforks. So when it was finally made public, there was immediate backlash. Blizzard was alleged to have a toxic work culture, with male employees getting drunk and harassing their female co-workers. This accusation was then backed up- Hey, put a hundred people is the best place. Um, when is it the best place then? Dude, dude. Bro, imagine you spend your life, life, juice, and effort making something and, and putting it out there and everybody in the middle of it, some guy comes in and says and do something completely unrelated and hide it in your entire broadcast. Do you think, do you think, do you think it's appropriate or fair for the, for the essence of the broadcast and people who are doing it? It's not, dude. It's fucking not. By a management system, it's a lame they as not only fuck. This behavior, but even encouraged it. Blizzard would, of course, deny the claims, which led to over 2,600 of Blizzard's 9,500 employees signing an open letter demanding change. This was a PR nightmare. While Blizzard did slightly relent in a statement from the CEO, it wasn't nearly enough to heal years of mistreatment. So the employees went on strike, walking out of the Blizzard offices. It was clear that Blizzard wasn't only ignoring fans, but it was ignoring their workers. And this self-induced disaster was made much worse by the immediate. It garnered. For many fans, this was the last straw, and the company's reputation has been ruined irreversibly. A Blizzard employee's personal story of their negative experiences at the company blew up on Reddit, gaining over 25,000 upvotes. When an employee. People are so full of virtue these days, it's just disgusting. Virtue sniggling cock lords without a fucking spine, man. Actually lame. Oh. All employees should quit Blizzard in, in support of victims and, we, and, and, and bad things. Oh, me from my basement, unemployed? I'm telling you guys who move your entire lives, livelihood, children and families across the fucking states, across different countries, to have a simple job and income. And you need to relinquish your income immediately. Quit your job because I said do that. So we are all together against bad. Like, fuck off, man. Shut the fuck up, bitch. It was sexually so cringe, assaulted. man. At a holiday party, we had to fight it's tooth and nail with HR man. to get them to take any action through which they victimized her and blamed her. Now we've got an employee who's taken her own life, 
seemingly because of the treatment that she experienced at the hands of her leadership and her co-workers? This sentiment was also true for many of Blizzard's shareholders and investors, who in turn filed a lawsuit against the company. They alleged that Blizzard had broken the trust between themselves and how their shareholders. I, how do I pander to SJW? Bro, bro, I said in the past, as I said, is that don't, don't be homophobic and don't be racist. Oh my God, such virtue. Don't be racist. Oh my God, oh my God. This guy is virtually like, he says, don't be racist. That's insane. Fuck, man. Like, what Many of the, the investors fuck? who caused this in the first place You're pulled so much needed resources from the company. Another report in November further sealed Blizzard's fate. It showed that upper management had known about the problems for years, but chose to ignore them completely, Jeez. which again caused another walkout and further damaged Blizzard's already tarnished reputation. And then the cherry on top was the investigation results, which couldn't have come at any worse time for the company. With Blizzard's continuous failures, corruption, and greed, this was the final nail in their coffin. The company's decline is clearly shown in financial numbers. Their stock price would fall from $100 at the start of 2021 to just $57 following the harassment allegations. This was also unsurprisingly around the time that Blizzard started to make some leadership changes. They even attempted hiring some outside names, but some of their choices seemed a little odd. For example, they hired Francis Townsend to oversee the company's compliance with government conventions. And oddly enough, Townsend, a Bush administration security advisor, has been widely criticized for her waterboarding advocacy. For a company trying to improve their image, this was quite a strange choice. And while new faces come onto the scene, old ones would leave. Jeff Kaplan, the heavily involved lead designer of Overwatch 1 and 2, chose to leave after 19 years of Blizzard. It was a bad sign that one of the most influential figures in the company was choosing to leave so abruptly. With Blizzard's stock plummeting and the company in collapse, they finally made the decision to sell the company to Microsoft. The deal hasn't been completed yet, and so who knows what happens next? Interesting. Theodore John Kaczynski, better known as the Unabomber, is one of the most interesting people of the 21st century. Both a genius and a madman, Ted engaged in a ruthless campaign of terrorism by mailing bombs throughout the late 70s to mid 90s.